The SUV has evolved to resemble the ordinary car, giving rise to the crossover. Meanwhile, the regular hatchback has been moving in the opposite direction. In the United States, the Audi A3 is available only as a small, slow-selling sedan. However, in Europe, it has received a mid-cycle facelift and the introduction of the A3 Allstreet, a four-door wagon with a raised ride height and crossover-inspired plastic body cladding. Audi claims it offers an SUV-like driving experience combined with high functionality, a statement that, honestly, feels more like a warning than a promise. Naturally, we were curious to investigate this claim. Audi has announced that the A3 Allstreet won't be available in the United States, making it forbidden fruit for American buyers. We can confirm that the Allstreet provides a slightly higher and marginally less precise driving experience compared to the regular A3. The Allstreet's name and robust design elements draw clear inspiration from Audi's long-established A4 Allroad and A6 Allroad models. However, as the name Allstreet suggests, this model is tailored more for urban environments than for off-road adventures. It features a modest suspension lift of 0.6 inches and larger wheels, resulting in a total ground clearance of 1.2 inches over the standard A3 hatchback. The Allstreet is available only with front-wheel drive. In Europe, it offers two powertrains, a 1.5-liter turbocharged inline-four gasoline engine and a 2.0-liter turbocharged inline-four diesel engine, both producing 148 horsepower. The gasoline engine comes with a standard six-speed manual transmission with an optional seven-speed dual-clutch automatic, while the diesel engine is paired exclusively with the automatic. We tested the 1.5-liter engine with the dual-clutch automatic, designated as the 35 TFSI. On a route around Munich that included country roads, a dirt track, and a stretch of deer restricted Autobahn, American buyers shouldn't feel too disappointed about missing out on the smaller gasoline engine. Its refinement is limited, with a level of vibration at idle that makes the Allstreet feel like it has three cylinders rather than four. Despite Audi's claims of improved gearbox software, the automatic transmission often felt hesitant when starting from a standstill, a trait observed in other Volkswagen Group dual-clutch products. However, once in motion, the shifts are smooth and rapid. The 1.5-liter engine's low-end torque is strong, thanks to a 48-volt hybrid system with a starter generator that adds up to 12 horsepower and 36 pound-feet of assistance, achieving a peak of 184 pound-feet at just 1,500 RPM. This is fortunate, as the engine becomes loud and gruff when pushed toward its 6,000 RPM redline. We didn't verify Audi's claimed 8.4 second zero to 62 miles per hour time, nor did the Allstreet encourage us to do so. Other aspects of the driving experience were more impressive. The Allstreet's higher suspension features softer springs and dampers than the regular A3, which helps smooth out the ride over rough surfaces. On the rare large bumps found on Bavaria's generally smooth roads, the Allstreet felt slightly underdamped, especially when changing direction simultaneously. However, it handled urban speed bumps and a dirt track well, and its cruising refinement was similar to that of the regular A3, even when legally exceeding 100 miles per hour on the Autobahn. Although some steering precision is lost due to the raised suspension, the response remains keen, and grip levels are adequate for the performance on offer. The Allstreet also hints at some updates we can anticipate for the US market A3. Digital instruments are now standard across all European versions, accompanied by a 10.1-inch touchscreen. Audi has addressed criticisms of the A3's drab and gloomy interior with a vibrant makeover, introducing adjustable cabin lighting with 30-color LED strips on the doors and across the top of the dashboard, as well as the option for matching backlit door panels. This definitely makes the cabin feel more cheerful, though there are still some hard, cheap-feeling plastics in the lower parts of the interior. The A3 center console has also been redesigned, featuring a new gear selector for the automatic gearbox, a direction switch similar to those found in electric vehicles. Additionally, in Europe, a wireless charging pad with two USB-C charging ports will be standard. There are also two more USB-C ports in the back, although the rear space remains tight for adults. The A3 also marks a new departure for Audi in Europe, with the arrival of what are described as function-on-demand subscription options. Cars are built to one hardware specification, with owners then able to pay extra to unlock functionality, either for a limited period or permanently. Controversially, 
One of these will be smartphone integration to allow for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay to run on the Audi's operating system, a function that, in Europe as in the States, is pretty much universal on every car with a touchscreen display. Audi will charge $12 to unlock this for a month or $114 for a year. Audi wouldn't give a price for permanent activation. Other functions kept under a digital lock include Audi's built-in navigation system, adaptive cruise control, automatic high-beam headlights, and two-zone climate control, with single-zone standard for misers. Another strange option, one that doesn't appear to cost extra, is a configurable pattern for the A3's daytime running lights. The 24 LED panels above the headlights can be switched between four different configurations, reducing the risk of the social embarrassment that would come from turning up at an event to find another A3 owner wearing the same pattern. We were delighted to see that one of these makes the A3 look as if it is wearing a set of evil cartoon eyebrows, something we are taking as proof of the existence of the German sense of humor. The A3 All Street starts at $29,750 before sales tax in Germany, with the need to pay more, of course, if you wanted to talk to your phone. We'll find out which revisions will make it to the US market A3 and S3 sedans later in the year. Here's hoping the pay-as-you-go features aren't among them. 2025 Audi A3 Still a sharper choice in the compact luxury segment. The 2025 Audi A3 might not be a complete overhaul, but the revisions Audi made to its popular compact sedan and sportback elevate it further in the competitive luxury segment. Here's a closer look at what the A3 offers. Sleek refresh on a classic design. While not a drastic change, the exterior gets a mild restyling that keeps the A3 looking sharp. The signature Audi design features are there, but with a touch more modern flair. Interior, tech upgrade with mixed materials. The most significant changes happen inside. The center console gets a modern makeover with a new gear selector and wireless charging pad. Audi's virtual cockpit digital instrument display remains a highlight, offering excellent clarity and customization options. Material quality steps up in some areas, but some reviewers found certain elements feeling a bit cheap for an Audi. Punchy performance, improved efficiency. The 2025 A3 retains its peppy turbocharged engine, offering a satisfying driving experience. Audi claims a 0 to 100 km per hour time of 8.1 seconds, a slight improvement over the previous model. More importantly, the A3 boasts impressive fuel economy, with estimates reaching up to 5.8L slash 100km for the Sportback. Practicality, a compact compromise. Keep in mind that the A3's focus on sporty style comes at the expense of rear seat space and trunk space. While usable, they're definitely tighter compared to some competitors. If you prioritize spaciousness, the A3 might not be the best choice.